What is up, beautiful people? Thank you for joining me today. And today we're gonna to be talking about Enneagram type four and uh, the levels of health or levels of self-mastery. Our material's gonna be coming from this book, Bringing Out the Best in Everyone You Coach. Um, and I'm glad that you have decided to uh, check in and watch this video. Maybe you are a four or you have uh, a four that's in your life. You're trying to better understand yourself or better understand the people that you love. And the Enneagram is a great tool to help us understand more about ourselves. It often shows us the things we don't want to see about ourselves. So if you come looking at the Enneagram to see how great you are or how wonderful you are, you might be disappointed. Uh, the Enneagram tends to show us uh, you know, where we struggle, where we get stuck. And so it can be a very useful tool if we'll approach it with, uh, with a humble attitude. So before we get started, I just want to remind you that in the description below is a link to my website, tomlehue.com, and I do offer coaching appointments. Uh, if that's something you're interested in to know more about uh, being a better you, or uh, if you need help you know, figuring out what your type is, or your dominant wings, or your subtypes, or, or how to get along with the people uh, in your life that, um, that are different than you. Uh, whatever I can do to help, just uh, reach out to me. I'd love to hear from you. Also, uh, I want to thank uh, my patrons uh, and their continued support for this channel. And um, if, you, uh, if this content is helpful to you, then consider uh, supporting the channel uh, through Patreon. The link is right there in the description below. Okay, so let's get started with type four. Uh, I do have a lot of uh, fours uh, that are interested in this channel. I've noticed that the traffic for four videos and nine videos, I think fours and nines, you know, um, not that the other, other types don't, but fours and nines really do wanna know themselves and are really trying to understand uh, themselves and understand what's going on. So I appreciate that. I appreciate the interest. Um, you know that fours demonstrate in this channel and uh, I have to admit when I started learning about the Enneagram you know fours were one of the one of the most challenging for me to understand and I think you know I've really grown in my understanding and appreciation of of what type four is and you know the struggles that type fours um, uh, go through and so uh, I want to begin with that with with uh, with that um, uh, with reaching out to you and saying look I think I, I could never really know what it's like to be a four uh, or any of the other types, uh, but uh, I do have an appreciation. And so hear that. Uh, what, what I say in, in this video, as with all the videos, can at times be sharp, can at times be painful, and I hope that, um, uh, that you take uh, what I'm saying uh, for the encouragement that it's intended. All right, so let's look at the, the levels of, of health for type four. We're gonna look at the three levels that are offered in this book. Uh, look at them and then talk about them, okay? So let's start with the lowest level and then we'll move up to the highest level. The lowest level uh, is called the invisibly defective or the defective one or the deficient one. Uh, the invisibly defective. The mid-level uh, of health is called the unique individual, or you might say the special one, or the special individual. Uh, not a part of the group, but unique, different, and special individual, the, mi the mid-level. The highest level of health for type four is called the appreciator. Okay, so obviously you by this time I'm sure no, no doubt know that the, the sin of the, of the four is envy. And I think it has to do with the idea that everybody else's life you know, seems to make sense to them. Everybody else seems to come from this family where people get along and they feel loved and included and appreciated and understood. And, and, and I don't as a four. As a four, I, and remember, I'm a seven wing six, so I'm, I'm personifying you know, this, this four person, okay? A four may feel like they don't really belong. They don't really fit in. They don't, there's something off, uh, there's something broken, there's something inherently flawed with them or with the, the world they live in. And so they, they often feel very misunderstood. They feel like uh, people you know, are rejecting them or not including them or don't really want them. And you know, the paradox of the four is, I just wanna belong, I just wanna fit in, I just want to, to feel like I'm a part of the whole, yet the paradox is, is 
from an outside perspective, it would seem that a lot of the behaviors and a lot of the, the things that are said by the four seem to indicate that they don't want to be a part of the group. They don't want to be a part of the whole. They don't want to, you know, lose themselves uh, to, uh, to the team or to the group. And so it can be a little difficult for people to understand uh, the struggle that the four feels because it, from an outsider's perspective, it may seem like, wow, you're bringing a lot of this on yourself. You want to be a part of the group and you want to belong, yet, you know, you can sometimes be kind of scratchy with others. You can sometimes be overly easily offended by others. Uh, you can be sometimes a little bit snarky or harsh with others. Uh, you can sometimes come across like you're better than others. And so we're having a hard time understanding that you really want to be a part of the group when you tend to isolate yourself away from the group. So this is a very you know, difficult uh, position to find yourself in and we want to understand it better so that maybe uh, you, don't, you aren't stuck in your fourness. The compulsions and the impulses of being a four don't have to rule your life and hinder you from being a, um, a part of the group, being uh, more present to life. Let's put it that way. Okay, so let's, let's look at the lowest level. So this ought to be fun, right? Okay. Um, all right, let's go to the deep end of the pool here. Uh, the lowest level of the four, the, um, what is called the invisibly defective. So let's go with that word invisibly for a minute. People don't see me. Um, I don't really uh, matter to these people. Uh, it's as if I'm not even here. And so, you know, I remember when I played basketball, I was so bad at basketball in fourth grade or fifth grade. I was tall, so they said, oh, he'll, be, he'll love to be on the team. I'm a seven, right? So I got bored immediately. You stand around and you run back and forth and what's, this isn't fun. So I got bored with it. And um, I remember thinking, you know, I, I don't, I've never scored a point in a game. Maybe if I just foul somebody, at least, at least somebody, at least I'd make a difference. You know, at least there'd be some point, even if I was in the wrong, at least I remember reaching out and fouling somebody just so the whistle would blow. Hey, I got some attention. And, you know, when you feel invisible, a person might act out, you know, might act out in ways that aren't productive, that aren't helpful, that don't bring positive attention because maybe some attention is better than no attention. So to feel invisible, I think would, would it, for many of us, would, would feel awful. Now, maybe some types <laughs> at some times might wish they were invisible so people would leave them alone. But, you know, what does that got to feel like to feel like you don't matter or you're not a part or you're not included or you don't belong? And, and, and so if I felt like I was invisible and I was defective, like there's something wrong or inherently flawed in me, I might maybe do some things that people would misunderstand um, you know, to see if people even noticed me, if people even were aware that, that I was there or that I wasn't there anymore. I might move away from the group to see if anybody even missed me. And um, a person might be inclined to act out in certain ways if they felt like they didn't matter or they felt like they weren't wanted um, or that they were invisible. You know, they might poke you every once in a while to just see if if that matters, okay? All right, so let's, let's read what she says here. Uh, being intrinsically defective. Okay, so catch that. You know, a four, inherent in fourness is not like, oh, there's something wrong in my life because, you know, my marriage isn't working out or my kids are having problems or my health. It's not like, oh, there's this obvious fact over here that wasn't a problem and now all of a sudden it's popped up and now I have to deal with this difficult thing. That's not, that's not, I don't think that's what we're talking about. It's, there's this intrinsic uh, flaw. There is this uh, fundamental to who I am uh, problem that I might not be able to quite get my finger on. You know, it's not easy to label. It's not like, oh, you know, I didn't pass my science class, so that's my problem. If somebody said, hey, Tom, what's your problem? Well, I didn't pass my science class. 
Okay, well that's an obvious problem that we can then deal with. But when you have a fundamental intrinsic problem, how do you put your finger on that and how do you solve that? You know, people, people want to solve problems. And if you're down and you're melancholy and you're frustrated and somebody says, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? I mean, just think about that. The person is thinking, something's wrong with me and I don't know what it is. So, if something's wrong with me and I don't know what it is. And then everybody around you is saying, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? It may just further reinforce the belief that there must be something wrong with me because everybody that interacts with me is asking me what's wrong with me. And it's not like I can point my finger at it and say, I'm not doing well in science or my dog is not healthy. My dog is dying. Those are obvious things and then we go, okay, well, let's let's try to fix that. What do we do to make you a better science student? How do you fix I'm fundamentally flawed and intrinsically without worth and value? How do you fix that? Well, you know, people that aren't fours might get frustrated with this and just think, man, get over yourself, you know, get over yourself. You're making this about you and and they're not, since they don't struggle with this fundamentally flawed, intrinsically broken you know since since they don't struggle with this they might see you as they might see the four as being like overly sensitive and making this all about yourself and um inserting yourself where you're not include you know where you don't belong and and there might be all kinds of misunderstandings and no wonder the four feels like i'm not getting any help from people it's only getting worse um I am totally misunderstood. And maybe they even misunderstand themselves. I don't know, I'm not a four. I'm just trying to understand myself, okay? So let's be patient with each other. So um, their core fear is of being intrinsically defected and completely disconnected. Completely disconnected. So everybody's in the family room, you know, celebrating Christmas and everybody's laughing and everybody seems to just like, like the holiday makes sense to them. Like they're all a part of the group and like there's no angst in them. And the four might be looking at this and feeling like, I'm not really a part of this. I'm not really, I'm not really a part of this. They wouldn't even miss me if I, if I wasn't here. Um, and when everybody is, you know, laughing and, and joyful, the four might feel like they're not really included or they're not really wanted or they're not really appreciated. They're not really valued. And so you might see the four doing the opposite of what the group is doing. Everybody's laughing and joyful and they're looking sad and disconnected and isolating themselves. Um, and we might look at that and think, come on, get over yourself. We're having a great time. And again, the four is going to feel more misunderstood. What's wrong with you? <laughs> um, and that's probably not going to feel very helpful when you're in that state, you know, that um, I don't feel like they, like I'm really a part of this. I feel disconnected. I don't feel like I belong. What's wrong with you? Get back in there and you have so much to be thankful for. You were raised in a good family. You got so many people that love you. You grew up in a private school. You, you're young and attractive. You have your whole life ahead of you. And none of this is probably going to feel very helpful. Although the people saying it feel like they're being of great help. <laughs> Bringing you back, you know, to reality. And um, in their frustration, maybe trying to fix and if you feel like people are trying to fix you, it's probably only going to reinforce the concept in your mind that I'm fundamentally flawed. Everybody's trying to fix me. Again, I'm totally misunderstood. Um, so I don't know if I'm if I'm if I'm hitting a nerve here. If I'm if I'm close. If I'm flying over the target. But um, this is the kind of thing that that at least I perceive as going on in, in the mind of the four or in, in that uh, four, four energy, that four place, okay? Feeling unwanted, unloved. By the way, guys, you know, one thing I've discovered about the Enneagram, and this is powerful, powerful stuff. The very thing that, you know, you fear, that you are searching for 
is exactly what you bring in your health. And we'll get to that when we talk about, you know, the highest level of self-mastery for the four. But, you know, in the case of the four, like feeling like you don't belong, feeling like you're misunderstood, feeling like, you know, there has to be meaning and, and all of that in life and you're not really sure where that is for you and what that means for you. That's exactly what fours bring when they're healthy. They make other people feel understood. They make other people... Uh, they make the rest of us feel heard and like we belong and like we are appreciated and all the stuff that fours like isolate away because somebody's ma somebody's making them and it's not really somebody's making you it's it's in your fourness it's being confirmed by the actions of others but it's not like anybody's making you feel this way it might feel like that but it's kind of the message that you pick up on the message that you read. And so you might feel unwanted, unloved, un misunderstood, uncared for, like you don't belong, like there's something wrong with you. Just flip all that backwards. And, and that's what fours make others feel. They make others feel wanted and loved and understood and appreciated and, and in their health, in their health. And so you might say, well, how do I get healthy? Well, um, that's another video, isn't it? But let me just start with the, the obvious is, you need to be balanced between both of your wings, which for the four is the five and the three. And uh, balance between those wings, um, which you're you tend to be dominant toward one wing, then obvious thing is then move, try to incorporate more of that other uh, wing into your into the way you act and into the way you you operate. So if you're a four wing five, then learn more about the three and look at the benefits of threeness. Uh, and what it might do for you if you were to 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 move in that direction slightly, or think if you're a four wing three, what would four, what would five you know say to you? What kinds of things would five offer to you? And how do fives think and act and operate in the world? And that that could be of great benefit if you studied that. That's again another video. All right, so let's talk about the fours with low low health, low self-mastery, the invisible defective one. Fours with low self-mastery, this is going to be painful, but before you hear it, just ask yourself, ah, is it true? You know, do I ever struggle with this? Do I ever, you know, sort of go down into this outhouse, you know, this cave at the bottom of the hill? Do I ever go into this place? It says fours with low self-mastery, are, I, I, let's just say, let's be nicer and say could be or can be or might be perceived as are bitter, depressed, emotionally volatile, hypersensitive, and self-absorbed. Now that's not a pretty picture, is it? I mean, let, just try to be objective for a minute if you are a four and hear that and say, eh, yeah, I guess that's probably how I'm perceived anyway. Let's say it that way, how I'm perceived. If, if you are perceived, if she's, if she's right, okay, and if you are in your lowest levels of health when you're not doing well, when people should be the most supportive, right? When you're at your lowest health, when you're sickest is when you need the most care and concern. But when you're in your lowest health and you're showing these, these, these great strong symptoms of bitter and depressed, and emotionally volatile and uh, hypersensitive and self-absorbed, um, how are people going to respond to you? If that's true, if you try to put yourself in other people's shoes, if you're coming across in that way, how do you think people might respond to you? Try to be more understanding of them. Why are they why are they so mean to me? Why are they so, you know, you know, preachy to me? If they are perceiving that you are bitter, depressed, emotionally volatile, hypersensitive, and self-absorbed, then it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Why people might be frustrated with you when you're in that low state of health. Why people start preaching and lecturing you and telling you to get over yourself and you know, and, and why don't you focus on the positive? You only are focused on the negative. You have so much going for you. Because to them, you are looking at that time as though you are bitter, depressed, emotionally volatile, hypersensitive, and self-absorbed. And those are unpleasant things. You should shake yourself out of that and get back on the path. And, and you know, um, I don't want to be around somebody that, instead of just loving you, which is what people ought to do, right? Instead of just loving you while you're sick, or loving you while you're in pain, or loving you while you're broken, 
people tend to want to fix you or you fix yourself because I don't want to deal with you with all this sadness and all this. And that's that's a failure on our part, right? Um, and see, look at that as a four, you see that, that that's a failure on our part because maybe you wouldn't do that. You could help people, you would be naturally inclined to reach out to those that are hurting and broken and feeling unloved and unlistened, not listened to and not cared for. See, that's what you bring. That's what you bring into the world when you're healthy. When you're healthy and balanced, you might not get as preachy with people when they're not doing well. You might tend to saddle up next to them and try to understand them and listen to them and help them walk out of that misery and be heard and understood. See, that's what you bring. So it might seem a little bit confusing to you when people don't bring that to you because they're stuck in their types okay that's not maybe the gift they bring into the world they're just frustrated that you look sad and you should be happy it's your birthday it's your birthday and all your friends are here and you got all these presents and you should come out of your room and you but you're feeling like i don't want to come out of my room so they get preachy because hey i planned all this work and did all this work to make it a special day for you and you're ruining it Ugh. Okay. Here, take a Kleenex, dry the tears, because some of you have probably got tears now at this point, because who knows, you know, how you grew up. All right. So, and they feel deeply wounded by anything they perceive as a slight or a rejection. And so you are going to feel like people are saying things that maybe they're not intending at all. You know, somebody might say to you, um, honey, are you coming down for dinner? And what you heard was, we don't really want you to come down for dinner. And that's not at all what was said. Or um, somebody might look at your outfit and say, are you wearing that to, the, to school today? What did you hear? Um, they don't like what I'm wearing. They don't, they don't understand me or they're rejecting me or they, they think I'm a tramp or a floozy because of what I'm wearing. Or, and, you know, maybe they were just thinking it's cold outside and you need to put more layers on because you're going to be cold. Or it's hot outside. It's the middle of the summer and you're wearing all black and, you know, you're wearing boots and or it's it's fall in Florida and you know you'll see people in Florida in fall you know wearing fall clothes and it's kind of ridiculous because for fashion's sake you know they're wearing flannel shirts and stocking caps and boots all the way up to their knees you know because they're fashionable and yet you go outside and it's like it's 78 degrees outside so okay and so you might come down and whatever and are you really wearing that are you wearing that today honey Oh, you hate me. You don't like what I'm wearing. You Okay, so the, you tend to like absorb the negative. Remember, that's inherent in fourness is you tend to focus on the negative information, especially when it's about yourself. So even when people say something that they don't intend to be taken as negative, you're probably going to be inclined to take it as some kind of slight or rejection. And people are going to say, oh my goodness, you're so sensitive. You're such a sensitive person. Meaning, we have to walk on eggshells around you. We try to say something nice. We try to just invite you in. We try to, you know, have a conversation with you. And it turns into a big scene. Which, remember, the social four can be called, another name for the social four is the dram dramatist or the dramatic, you know, one. And so, uh, okay. We're growing here, aren't we? We're learning. We're growing. All of us. Um, none of us have got it 100%, but we're, we're growing. And the more you understand about yourself, hopefully, you know, the more you might be able to shake some of this off and realize, maybe I'm just a four doing four things here, and this isn't the most productive way for me to interact, and maybe, maybe I could let this thought go and sort of return back to reality. In other words, maybe my software is glitching a little bit, and um, maybe... Maybe this is just a four having four problems and maybe it's not really a problem. Maybe I could just set this thoughts aside. You say, well, how do you do that? Well, I do it all the time as a seven. I really do. I mean, 
I might be sitting here making a video thinking, I really wish I was outside riding a motorcycle right now. Well, okay, that's what sevens do. Sevens envision a brighter future and say, I'm bored with this. I really want to go out and do this other thing. Do I need to get up and leave right now and do that other thing? Is that in my best interest? Is that really my ultimate happiness to get up and leave everything I'm doing and do something else, do something different? Where does it stop? So I have to tell myself, okay, it's just seven stuff and I can let that thought go and return back to right now, doing right now. And a four can do that or at least can attempt to do that. Um, not let your personality control you and determine your happiness and success in life, you might realize that sometimes my personality is getting in the way of my best life. And so maybe, I, maybe I'm just a four dealing with four problems and, and some of these things I'm feeling aren't necessarily grounded in reality. Maybe it's just I'm looking at it through a certain lens. And you are, you're looking at life through a four lens and um, if you know that, oh wow, everybody else is looking through different colored glasses than I am, maybe I'm not seeing the whole picture. Maybe, I'm, maybe my, my vision is obscured, and if I recognize that, it doesn't have to have the same power over me that maybe it used to have. And that's powerful stuff if you'll just sit and think about it for a while. Powerful stuff. Um, it's like seeing life in a new way. Okay. They're going to feel deeply wounded and slighted and rejected, uh, even when maybe people aren't intending that, or maybe they're not intending it to the degree in which you're feeling it. They're dropping things like pebbles, right? But they land on you like boulders. Unable to extricate themselves from their negative self-perception, they can become, listen to these words, tormented, deeply ashamed. You know, sometimes when people are deeply ashamed, they'll do the opposite of what you would expect. So like, you know, a person that is ashamed might try to cover themselves up, right? I'm ashamed, oh, I'm embarrassed. Um, you know, I gotta keep myself covered. But a person might do the exact opposite of that. Like, I'm going to prove to myself, like think like the counterphobic six, like think like counterphobic shame. Like, I'm going to prove to the world and to myself that I'm not ashamed. I'm gonna become a nudist as a way of like dealing, but you're still, you're letting shame drive you. You're letting shame drive your behavior. Only you've become like counter shame. You're gonna like, you're gonna, you're gonna just say all kinds of curse words and, and just show the world that you're not ashamed. I'm going to just storm in and just say whatever's on my mind just to prove to myself and to the world that I'm not ashamed. Well, you're still dealing with shame. It's just the way you've chosen to deal with it. A person that doesn't really feel any shame doesn't feel like they need to overcompensate for that shame because they really don't feel it, all right? So their negative self-perception, they can become tormented, deeply ashamed, alienated, not a part of the group, they don't belong, they don't fit in, people don't want them or they're rejected, full of rage, and remember the sexual four or the one-on-one -on -one four, you know, could, can sometimes be a very angry, envious, spiteful, like that person is beautiful, I need to ruin them, I need to go after them, I need to pull them down and create their demise because they're above me, other people are perceiving them above me. I need to move in close, four goes to two in stress, right? I need to move in close and then create their demise and overtake them, overshadow them. And that's what envy does, it's not pretty. None of these sins are pretty. You know, the anger of the one is not pretty. The pride of the two, the deceitfulness of the three, the gluttony of the seven, the lust of the eight. None of these are pretty. And when you when you look at these for what they are, they're dragons. They are dragons. But you have no power to slay the dragon if you can't name the dragon. So let's name the dragon. The name of the dragon for the four is envy. They have a better life than me. Their relationships are 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 starry and 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 in faded pastel colors and mine is broken and mine is gray and mine is 
you know and so they all you know wear their uniforms and seem to fit in at work i could never do that i could never i could never just give myself my life to just punching a clock and 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 doing these mundane tasks i can't live like everyone else. look they're just enjoying the holidays it's like it's like they don't think about life and they don't think about and i can't and so you pull away from the group while the whole time wanting to belong to the group here's the thing you could belong to the group but i might lose myself and my specialness you might find yourself um, you know, I know like with my wife, I thought I really knew her. And then when we had babies and I saw her act as a mother, uh, I started to get to see other sides of her that I didn't see before. And then when, now that we have our first grandchild, I see even more sides of her that I didn't perceive and see before. Sometimes we don't really see ourselves unless we are a part of a group. We don't see our other parts of ourselves unless we are connected to others. But they don't understand me. They don't appreciate me. They don't really want me. And so we isolate ourselves, hoping then to find ourselves when... Okay, I'm getting too deep. I gotta remember I'm a seven. I'm not a five. <laughs> <laughs> Pull yourself back, Tom. You're going to go down into the abyss. Okay, so full of rage, withdrawn, highly aggressive. Again, if you're coming across this way, I'm not saying that you're like this, okay? Maybe you don't perceive yourself this way. This is the lowest level, right? But if others are perceiving you this way, I didn't write the book, okay? If others are perceiving you this way, how do you think they're going to relate to you? They're going to be frustrated. They're going to they're going to back up away from you because this person is aggressive, highly aggressive. They're withdrawn. They're they're broken. They're angry. They're frustrated. They're hurt, which only reinforces that feeling that you have maybe about yourself. Accusing individuals in particular and life in general in general for a, intentionally harming them. So you become accusatory. You kind of go on the war path, you know, looking for who is it that's making me feel this way? What is it they said? What is it they did? And look, this is the whole point is it's not them. Okay. It's not them. They are not creating your foreness. Foreness is your self-protective broken way of dealing with a broken world as a broken person. All of us fall into one of these self-protective ways. Yours happens to be for, for whatever reasons, it's the lenses through which you see life. And so um, when you catch that, that I tend to tune into certain things and block out other things because I am a four, it helps you reduce some of the blame and the accusations that others are making me feel this way. Others are causing me to feel misunderstood. Others are causing me to feel broken. They're removing their love for me and they're causing me to feel this way. No one's causing a six to feel anxious, but they're feeling anxious. No one's causing a nine to feel like their voice doesn't really matter. No one's causing a, a one to see all the imperfections and feel the anger of stuff not working out the way it's supposed to. No one's causing that. And no one's maybe causing, at least entertain the idea that um, you feel withdrawn, hurt, rejected, slighted, and then you find the person that's causing it. But the feelings are within you. If they're your feelings, they're in your yard. Okay? You are responsible for your feelings, your wants, your desires, your wishes, your beliefs. They're all in your yard. And if you're feeling something, it's yours to own. Well, they are making me feel this way. Okay, they're doing things that maybe you appreciate or don't appreciate, and your response to those things they're doing is you're feeling these feelings. Separate the two. It'll bring you so much help when you realize other people have the freedom to do and say whatever they want. 
I have the freedom to respond in whatever way I want. My response is in my yard. Their actions, words, behaviors, all that is in their yard. So they're not making me feel something. You might say it better like this. Hey, when you talk to me that way, I feel hurt or scared. That's different than you're making me feel hurt and scared. When you talk that way or when you act that way, I feel, see, you're doing these actions and I'm feeling this in response. I'm feeling this, but I own my feelings. I could dismiss those feelings, but see, in your forwardness, I got to be true to myself. My feelings are me. My feelings are who I am. You could dismiss those feelings and say, um, well, maybe I'm making too much out of this or wow, they're a jerk. You ever have that thought? Like instead of me saying, wow, I must really be a problem because look at how they're treating me. Why not say, wow, they're really kind of being a jerk. They woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Something's wrong with them. But see, the four is going to immediately think something is wrong with me. Their words to me just verified that. But see how you can flip that around? Instead of choosing to believe that story, something's wrong with me because of how they talked to me or how they didn't include me. So something's wrong with me. You have the ability to flip that narrative around and say, they didn't include me. They're kind of a jerk. That's a totally different way of looking at the same situation. So when you did that, I started to feel like you are a jerk rather than when you did that, I started to feel like I'm a jerk. Why are you the jerk? Maybe they are. Okay. Let's see. While they may express themselves in a variety of artistic forms, their art has a tragic quality from which there seems to be no escape. Which to a seven, that feels terrible. No escape. Okay. So let's look at the mid-level of health. The moderate level. The unique individual. The special one. I'm different. I'm unique. The core concern is they want to feel significant. They want to feel special. They want to find something meaningful in life and be meaningful. And they want to escape the mundane and do something, you know, superlative, something important. With a moderate degree of self-mastery, force can either uh, can be either dramatic or reticent. You know, they, they may seek meaningful relationships and authentic conversations. Fours don't like to waste time talking about football and weather and you know, they want to talk about the important things that matter, deep things. They can also be quite imaginative, transforming their inner experience or anguish and a search for meaning into artistic expression. And so they're great musicians, great music writers, great play writers, great novelists, very creative because they want to express all of the stuff, you know, the, the, the nuances and riches and richness and pain and heartache of life, express it in these artistic poetic ways that make them sometimes great entertainers um, or great performers. I mean, like I said, one of them is called the dr dr dramatic, dramatist, right? So dramatic and people are at least entertained, you know, by, by drama. Um, their conversations are frequently self-referencing. Now that's something that you may not realize about yourself is how much you think about yourself how much you talk about yourself, how much you turn conversations back toward yourself and your inherent, your inherent flaw, flaws or your, to what we might say, your, what we would say, others might say, your insecurity, you tend to make it about yourself. Um, you know, so somebody else, the idea is like somebody else at work gets complimented and immediately what does a four think? Well, what about me? Well, why didn't they say I did a good job? Well, this conversation was not about you at all, but see how you made it about you? See how you you immediately switch to like, well, what about me? Well, where do I fit? Well, why aren't they saying those things to me? How come they didn't ask me to, to be the, uh, uh, the minister uh, of this meeting, the facilitator? How come they ask them? What's so special about them? Why am I not the special one? So your tendency is to take the negative about yourself even when no one has mentioned you. And this, even if nobody mentions you, then you could turn that into something negative about yourself. Why did they leave me out? Why are they forgetting me? So self-referencing. Sevens are also self-referencing. So I'm, I'm, I'm with you, just not in the same way. Okay. 
I, me, and mine, prolong personal stories about yourself, redirecting conversations to themselves. You can kind of have that you, me, you, me kind of, you know, uh, way of coming across with people. Like, um, oh, that sounds terrible. I can't believe you had to go through that. That's nothing. Wait till you hear about my problems, you know. And, of course, how are people going to perceive that? Like, what's the point? You know, in your low health, other people aren't feeling very heard and validated or understood because you come back to yourself and you come back to your story and your tragedy and your, right? And so in your unhealth, you're not bringing the very thing that you should bring, which is understanding people, making them feel like they're included, making them feel like they're a part. Okay. Uh, constantly comparing themselves. Anytime you compare yourself with others, which is fours do this constantly, constantly. This is this is part of the envy thing. You know, what are they wearing? Oh, I'm not going to wear that. What are they wearing? Oh, I'm going to wear that. You know, that constant comparing yourself and having an eye for that. It's always going to move you in one of two directions, either pride and arrogance, like I'm better than they are because they do this and I do this which is going to isolate you away from people, or it's going to move you in the, in the pathway of discouragement. Oh, they have it better than I am. They do a better job than I do. I, I'm lame. I'm terrible. I'm, and that's, guess what? Going to move people away from you because nobody wants to be around a Debbie Downer. Nobody wants to be around, you know, a sad Sally. And so either way, when you compare yourself, you're setting yourself up for problems. You say, well, how do I start comparing myself? Ah, that's the highest level of health, isn't it? The appreciator. Rather than comparing yourself with like, well, what does this mean about me? If they did this and, and theirs is so wonderful, well, then what does that mean about the little thing that I did? The little thing that I did is not very valuable. Okay, so that's comparing yourself, right? At the highest level of health, the four is an appreciator, meaning you're able to take the eyes off of yourself, look at what they did and say, you know what, Jack? You did a great job. That's awesome. That is beautiful work. And it doesn't mean anything about bad about me that you were chosen and that you were selected and that you did such a marvelous, wonderful thing. That doesn't mean that I'm somehow a failure. This isn't about me. This isn't about my work. Let's put the spotlight on you and what you did and just say, that is great. That is awesome. That is wonderful. And it doesn't mean that I'm somehow less because... You know, mine isn't as grand or isn't at the same scale or it hasn't been recognized to the same degree in which yours has. When a four is healthy, they let go of some of this and they just appreciate the beauty and the wonder of other people and the moment they're in and other people's work and other people's beauty and other people's talent and they don't take it in a personal way like this somehow means that my stuff is no good or that I'm not loved or I'm not included or I'm not accepted. Uh, at that mid-level, last thing it says is constantly comparing themselves with others to determine whether they are superior or whether they are deficient. And look, why, why not go for this? Why always I'm this or I'm this? Why not can't we be this? Why can't they be awesome at what they do and I'm awesome at what I do? And we're all awesome in our own way doing whatever it is we do. Why does their success have to mean my shortcomings? Why does my success have to mean their shortcomings. Why can't, okay, I think in your health, you're here. In your unhealth, you know, you're, you're striving here or you're here. Okay. So these fours have difficulty being self-accepting, yearning, moody, sometimes melancholic. Again, if that's true, how will other people perceive you? How will they relate to you? If they think you're being moody and sometimes melancholic, um, Okay, but in their positive, they might be more reflective, emp empathic, empathic. There it is. See, making other people feel valued, heard, and understood, and cared about. Empathic and gifted. I like that word, empathic. So let's talk about the highest level, the appreciator. The core understanding at this level for the four is everything has meaning and significance. Fours want to find meaning. They want to do what's meaningful. They don't just want a paycheck. 
They don't just want to wear what everybody's wearing because everybody's wearing it. They don't want to listen to the music everybody's listening to because that's what everybody listens to. It's popular. They want to find something that is meaningful, substantive, rich. Um, and that's a good thing. That's a good thing. You should, you should uh, be proud of that. And everyone is connected at the deepest levels. So others' success doesn't mean your failure. Uh, fours with a high self-mastery emanate centeredness, tranquility, and calm. Remember at the lowest level, what was it? It said, full of rage, alienated, highly aggressive, accusing. Look at the highest level, centered, tranquil, calm. Their artistic expression is universal because they are open to both the delight and the sadness of life. Where sevens, you know, can be kind of naive and child childish, only wanting to focus on the positive. The four is much could be much more balanced in like, no, there's there's good and bad in life. There's lights and dark shades. There's there's beauty and there's and there's and there's horror. And and running from that doesn't make it go away. And accepting that and embracing that that's the way life is, there's a certain richness um, in, in that and an ability to help walk people through the beauties and the ashes of life, okay? Which we're getting into the purpose there of the four. Ooh, look, I'm getting chills. Getting chills. Okay. Uh, open to both the delight and the sadness that life brings, grateful and graceful. They deeply appreciate what they have rather than lamenting what they lack. Ooh, that's similar to sevens too. Sevens want more. More is better. And I don't really appreciate what I have. What I have, okay, I want more. Remember Ariel in the, in the, in the grotto? That's a seven. She's got all this stuff, but she wants more. I want to be up there, okay? And fours and sevens are both idealist this could be better we can make this better this we need that not this forced tend to be drawn to what is unavailable to them they have an overly highly romanticized view of the way things are going to turn out and of course when they don't there's disappointment and sadness but when when the four is at their highest level of health they dip, they deeply appreciate what they have rather than what they lack rather than what's not available to them these fours exhibit an inner wholeness and constancy and a gentle empathy. Look, they identify with people's pains and, and, and problems. And genuine concern draws others to them. You know, an unhealthy four is moving away from others. A healthy four is drawing others to them. Like a magnet, people want to be around this empathetic person who is so balanced at life and and can listen to my pains and struggles and, and make me feel like I'm not alone. The unhealthy four feels alone, feels like nobody cares about them. The healthy four makes me, when I feel alone, feel cared for. And like I'm not, I'm not at, my, at the end of my ropes. Somebody understands me and somebody uh, accepts me and appreciates me, uh, even though I'm broken, even though I'm flawed, even though I'm going through difficulties. This four is making me feel or I shouldn't say making me feel, right? Because I just did this whole lecture about nobody can make you feel, but okay. All right. Um, genuine concern draws others to them. So I would say another thing about healthy fours is they become a lot more active in a positive way. Instead of acting out, right? They become more active. They move to one and they become more productive. Ones are doers. You know, ones want to get the list done. Ones want to be productive, and a four, isolated and alone, might become pretty dark and not very productive. Um, but when they're getting healthier, they start to say, you know what, I just gotta shake this off and I've got to go out there and do what needs to be done. I've gotta go out there and get my work done and finish this project up. And, and uh, you know, I can't sit around and, 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 and just be um, lost in all of this. I've got to move forward. I've got to, 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 to get back out there in life. And four moves to one, or looks like a one, we might say at that point. Again, I would say fours do one better than ones. Ones do ones in black and white. You know, they're going to get their list done. It's all going to be finished, but it's going to be done because that's your duty. That's your responsibility. It's the right thing. It's all done, but it's all in black and white. Fours would come in and do the list in color 
with vibrancy, with feeling, with expression, and they're gonna put their thumbprint on it to make it different, special, and unique. Um, so it's gonna have a certain pizzazz to it that ones just don't necessarily maybe care about. They want it clean, neat, and orderly, tidy, finished, and move on to the next project. Okay, well, I hope that that has been helpful to you. I hope that I don't claim that I got it all 100%. Okay, but I'm learning as I go, and hopefully you are too. And the more we learn about ourselves, the more we appreciate every moment that we are given. And uh, so be present to life. For a four, you know, you can sometimes get lost in the way it ought to be. It should be like this, and I should be feeling all of this. And you could miss life as it is. And when you can maybe realize that sometimes the things I'm feeling are just a four feeling four stuff, doesn't have to control me anymore. I can let some of this go as hard as it is, as awkward as it is, lean on my less dominant wing at times and move back in to where the people are, to where the connectedness is and um, become more present to life. Thank you guys and I'll see you next time.